All right, it is done. Well, more or less. There's a few odds and ends to tidy up, but uh, it runs. I will start it in a minute here and just kind of go over what I did since last time. So obviously we have intercooler pipes now. Shout out to my buddy Evan for welding those up for me. They're all shiny, TIG welded, polished up pretty good actually. So connected the stock Idler motor connections there. There's uh, the crankcase vent, that's that polished pipe there that goes into the inlet of the turbo. Um, there's a brand new flame trap in it. I might put a catch can in it too if I find it's gargling too much oil, but uh, for now it seems good. Motor seems tight, other than I have a leaky front main seal because uh, I used non OEM Volo gaskets or seals rather, and I should know better by now, but uh, yeah. Save yourself some aggravation and just put in the Volvo seals. I don't know what makes any lip seal different than the other, but the Volvo ones don't seem to leak and all the other ones seem to. And, you know, I know I don't have crankcase pressure issues in this car. I know the crank was clean. I put in lots of seals before. For whatever reason, these ones leak. So I'm like, oh, cool. So whole front has to come off again. Pull it off. <clears throat> put new seals in it put it all back together and uh, yeah just keep driving it so um, oil feed like I said I did it in hydraulic hose they come up nice same with the drain um, yep rad is back in that's just a stock rad um, I tuck the NPR kind of behind it you can just see the ears of it here um, and then hiding out up in front there um, I'm really happy I had to weld some little brackets on down there but happy with how that ended up um, there's a B21 FT oil cooler down there with the lines and everything with all the stock sandwich plate adapter and stuff. Um, like I said, I didn't like the aftermarket Amazon one I had, so I got that. I also stuck a remote oil filter adapter in there, uh, just to make oil changes and my life easier and my hands less burnt. Um, the stock ones are kind of tucked in the exhaust manifold there or around it. Um, here, well, on down. Let's see, yeah, you can see the lines going out there. Uh, it got pretty tight pretty quickly, actually, in all fairness. But, uh, oh yeah, there's some oil getting blown back over everywhere in the front main. So that's the drain. You can see the oil cooler there into the pan. Hydraulic hose, adapter, wastegate things, downpipe. Um, yeah, nothing else really exciting down here. I will uh, crawl back out and we will start it. Oh, and I'll show you what I'm most proud of so far. <coughs> Keys here? Yes. Do. So this is running on the 954 Turbo ECU and 207, uh, 207 Easy K. Um, it's nice, it just fires right up. So that exhaust cutout I was talking about is now activated tied into the vacuum canister down there and with a solenoid valve and a relay and who what does this button do I don't know Friggin' sweet. Super stoked about that. So, I am like super stoked about that. Uh, next on the list is Wideband. Like I said, shouldn't play with these cars without one. I picked up a Innovate SCG1, which is kind of a neat go. So it is actually, believe it or not, a Wideband, a Boost Gauge, a Shift Light, 
and a boost controller in one. So I'm going to stick that in that dash hole there. And then I have all my info in one. So that's a little bit of wiring, but not too bad. There's, you know, it was pretty reasonable price. I think it was about 400 bucks, but there's, you know, boost valve, or solenoid valve, wideband, all the wiring. There's a cable so you can actually tie it in with your laptop. And data log, a little bit of stuff, which is nice. Everyone likes data. So, yeah. So far, it's running about five or six pounds of boost, and it seems to be pulling pretty good, actually. I am happy with it. Um, I need to get the wideband in it and see exactly what it's doing with AFRs with those 30 pound Ford turbo coupe injectors. Um, I did order a set of chips from a fellow in the UK, J Watts Performance. Um, hopefully they get sent out soon. Then I can put in some 50 pound injectors and a bigger math and then I have a lot more headroom. Um, looks like I scored a uh, T5 swap as well. So uh, when I blow up the M47, when, not if, I will put that in as well. Um, but uh, the next video we will uh, tootle around and do some skids. The back diff is locked. Um, and yeah, I've got some R32 Skyline rims on there, actually, because the Steelys were way too wide. Those ones have just a hair of poke but uh, when it's on the ground, it's not too bad. The other ones were way the heck out here, and it was just screaming, give me a VI, please, I'm different. So not doing that. These are nice. They got some nice Continental tires on them, but uh, I'll put some burners on the back and hoon around for you. And uh, yeah, just odds and ends. Um, I have to put the interior back together. There's a few loose panels. Um, I don't know, not too much actually. There's an exhaust clunk back there, which is just from me being lazy and not putting enough hangers in there. Um, new front brake pads, because it gets to speeds I want to stop uh, fast enough that I'm concerned about the condition of them. So I should probably change them. And then, uh, yeah, keep driving around and keep turning up the boost and get it to a point where I'm happy or the clutch slips, whichever comes first. So uh, yeah, anyways. Um, that's it for now. Stay tuned for skids and general hooning.